on this episode of Motoring Box, we're going to be trying to avoid a milkshake. So what am I talking about when I say milkshake? Well, a common issue with these Ford Falcons is they actually use the radiator on the front of the engine here to both cool the engine coolant, but also the oil from the transmission. Now the coolant of course circulates through the core of the radiator itself, but the oil lines from the transmission actually hook into the cool side of the radiator and basically run through that entire end tank on the driver's side of the car. That allows the transmission fluid to be cooled, relatively speaking, back to probably 70 degrees or so. Now ordinarily that is not really a massive issue. The issue is when these radiators actually fail. What happens is coolant can mix in with your transmission oil and create a liquid which looks rather like a milkshake. Although it doesn't taste anywhere near as good. Now the mixing actually goes both ways. So the transmission fluid is actually going into your coolant. That is not ideal, but obviously it's not going to hurt your engine that much. What does hurt is when the coolant gets into your transmission fluid because the transmission fluid is really the lifeblood of the transmission. And if you're introducing a liquid which is not really providing any lubrication, you're not gonna be in for a good time. In fact, it's gonna cost you at least two and a half thousand dollars to rebuild a BTR four speed automatic. And if you're talking about the ZF six speed in some of the later Falcons, that's like four grand upwards, five, six, depends where you go, but they are far more expensive. So how are we going to fix this problem? Well, about a year ago, I purchased this DriveTech standalone transmission cooler. This thing bolts to the front of your radiator. So we're basically disconnecting the transmission fluid pipes from the radiator, routing them through this radiator, and then that will basically separate these two radiator and the two fluids away from each other. And of course the added benefit of a separate transmission cooler means the transmission fluid can be kept at a lower temperature. And that's really good for towing or lots of strenuous driving because heat is really the enemy of an automatic transmission like the BTR four speed. So this kit cost me $217 and I will leave a link in the video description below if you want to grab one. There are a whole lot of options out there and if I had my time again, I'd probably go to PWR and order one of theirs because it does look like a better built unit. But one thing I'd like to consider here before we continue is this kit, right? It costs 200 and something dollars to buy. That's actually not a lot less than a brand new radiator. So really, if you want to err on the side of caution, you can go this route, but almost equally as good would be just replacing the entire radiator in the front of your car. That's going to mitigate the issue. So yeah, there's really two ways you can go about it. This is obviously an expensive proposition, not a lot less than an entire new radiator. So. Both ways are going to fix the problem, but arguably having a standalone cooler like this one is going to do a better job. So that was my logic. That's what we're gonna to do today. Come along for the ride. We'll see how it goes. Right, so here's a look at our kit. We have some installation instructions, which I may actually take a look at this time. Uh, we have some hose, we have the cooler itself, and uh, basically some fittings here, which are going to help us connect it to the existing lines. Now straight away I've already got the thermofans removed out of this car. Uh, we've also taken the snorkel out as well to get the thermofans and you can see the two transmission cooler lines here. So we've got the upper one, which you can see right there. Then going into the bottom of the radiator, we've got the secondary one. So they both duck off down the passenger side of the engine to the transmission, but this is where we're going to be intercepting those lines. KFC Street. I've been running on the freeway. Now before we begin it makes sense to replace the automatic transmission fluid as well and unfortunately there is no drain plug on the bottom sump of these gearboxes so you simply have to loosen the bolts towards the back of the pan and slowly sort of lower it down until the fluid starts to gush out. This is actually a really messy job but if you've got a fairly big drain pan you can catch most of it. So undo the pan bit by bit until you've got it almost all the way off, drop it down, get the remainder of the fluid out, and then remove the pan entirely from the gearbox and get the tray out of the way. So with the pan removed, we can have an inspection of what it looks like on the inside and check out all of the metal filings which are attracted to the magnet. 
So this magnet is doing a fantastic job keeping these filings out of the gearbox itself. And we're just going to pull the seal off and then clean this pan very thoroughly. So I'm just using some brake cleaner here, but degreaser will work as well. And we also need to pull this magnet out and get every single metal filing off it if possible. I usually run it under some water and just use your hands with some gloves to get them all off. But, but you need to make sure you get as much of it off as possible before we refit this later on. So I'm going to clean it up as best I can, hit it one more time with some degreaser and then let it sit for a while. With the gearbox ready to go, we can turn our attention to installing our transmission cooler. On an AU Falcon, this is a pretty easy job, but just remove the four rivets which hold the front grill on, take the grill off, and we've got really good access here to install the cooler. Now installing this cooler is fairly simple. You've got this plastic kind of shaft here which goes through your condenser, through your radiator, then uses these little mounting pads to space it off the condenser. So we're going to pre-install all of these prongs to make sure we've got the spacer pads in the right spot. And then we're going to offer up the cooler to the front of the condenser, making sure you space it off the left side to make sure you've got enough space to run your cooler lines. So I'm basically just eyeballing this to make sure it's fairly straight. And then we just need to put these sort of plastic prongs through the condenser, feed it through the radiator in behind. Don't worry if the fins are sort of bent out of the way because that's exactly how this thing needs to be installed. Do the same thing with the other three mounting holes and then you can move into the engine bay and attach the plastic clips from the other side. And then feed them down until they're pinned nice and tightly against the back face of the radiator. Now this radiator is looking a little bit worse for wear but I think it's going to do the job for a few years longer. So attach all four clips, make sure they're nice and tight. And then once you're happy, just use a pair of scissors to cut off the excess length of the pins. From there we can start offering up our transmission cooler lines. And this kit actually just came with one big hose and then we just need to cut it in half, feed it through into the spot, feed it onto the barb of the cooler and then tighten up the hose clamp. We then need to move back to the engine bay and loosen the factory transmission cooler lines and remove them from the driver's side of the radiator. From there we just need to carefully bend these hard lines a little bit out of the way so that they bypass the radiator altogether. And from there I'm putting a bit of thread sealer on the factory connection here and then using the included barb fitting which was in the kit. Now this kit unfortunately only included one of these fittings because it seems like they intended the transmission cooler to be supplemental and added in line with the stock cooler. But that's not really what I want here. I want to use this cooler by itself. So I actually need to purchase a second one of these lines because this little adapter they included is not going to be suitable. So for the moment, I'm simply going to yeet this rubber hose onto the stock hard line, and that is not ideal, but I think in the interim time, it's going to do the job. So it's not pretty. I'm not proud of what I've done, but we'll come back and fix this later on. I guarantee it. So with the cooler lines installed, we can turn our attention back to the transmission and replacing the filter on these BTR four speeds is actually fairly simple. The toughest thing is actually releasing this little clip which holds the filter in place. And do pay attention to the position of this clip and the orientation of it to ensure it is the correct way around when you're reinstalling it. So once the excess fluid is drained away, we can pull the filter out. And then don't forget about the little O-ring which is often still stuck in the transmission itself. Flick it out carefully with a flat bladed screwdriver and then you're good to go with the reinstallation of your brand new filter. This is the exact opposite of what you've just done, removing the old one, put the mounting clip in place, and you're good to go. From there, I'm just simply wiping down the mating surface on the bottom of the transmission, reinstalling the pan, and then carefully tightening up the bolts in a sort of radial motion to get an even amount of torque onto every aspect of the pan. Now the bolts on this pan only needed about four to six Newton meters of tightness, which is bugger all to be honest. And you do run the risk of buckling the pan if you tighten any single bolt up any more than the others. So you need to be really careful here, go slowly, torque them up to spec and don't over tighten them. So unfortunately these BTR four speeds on AU Falcon onwards don't actually have a dipstick which allow you to fill the transmission through the hole. So we have to use one of these one liter oil pumps and then fill the gearbox up with the Castrol TQ95 transmission fluid. But as you'll find out, things didn't quite go to plan. So as you'll see there, the head of my gearbox filler bolt was actually rounded off. 
and unfortunately it was so late in the day I couldn't actually get a replacement. I do have one on order though. But what I was actually forced to do to get this car back on the road was simply fill it through the trans cooler line. Now that took me about the best part of an hour and I carefully measured out the fluid as well. So about four liters came out of the gearbox when I dropped it and that's because there is still a certain amount left in the torque converter itself. If you want to fully flush the gearbox, I'll put a link up here in the top corner to an awesome video by Brownie's Garage. But to me, it's not really worth doing that unless the gearbox has some serious problems. But this one has always operated just fine. So I think a service level sort of fluid change will be fine for it. And as I mentioned, four liters came out and for good measure, I actually put five liters back in. Because I've actually spoken to a few people about these gearboxes and one bloke who actually worked in a garage for 20 years said the more fluid you can pack into these boxes the better. And that is true for many other things in life as well. So 5 litres went into the box. Uh, I'm not able to check really the level of the fluid but I do know it is above that minimum line. And the car has run really well for the past week. So look. Your mileage may vary. I do have a new sump, um, a filler bolt for that gearbox on order. And when it turns up, I will replace it. Um, and I also do have a fitting for the trans cooler as well. You notice that I sort of yeeted that line onto that uh, existing um, flared end of the hard pipe. I will be replacing that with a proper um, barb fitting as well, just like that was included in the kit. Uh, but yeah, that's on order as well. Hasn't turned up yet, but it's not leaking, luckily. So it's going to do the job until that barb fitting turns up. Uh, it wasn't ideal of course, but look, sometimes you have to just do these things in order to get your car back on the road. If you're driving it every day, I can't afford to have this thing off the road. So I had to do what I had to do, but luckily it's running really well. Now, as I mentioned, there weren't really any serious problems with how this gearbox performed previously. However, I will say there was a small improvement I noticed, and that was the speed it takes for the gearbox to shift between say park and reverse and drive. So in the past it would take ever so slightly longer to get into reverse, but now it's pretty much instant like it should be. So it has actually improved how the box operates ever so slightly. So if you've got delays shifting between gears or if your gearbox is making a few strange noises or flaring on the shifts or something, then it might be worth flushing out the transmission fluid. But for me, this was enough and I'm really happy with the result. And best of all, we have separated those two fluids which are incompatible with each other. So I wasn't really happy with them being in such close proximity. And as I mentioned, it can put you up for a gearbox rebuild if uh, it all goes wrong. So a trans cooler is really a good piece of insurance to future proof your car and hopefully avoid that massive expense. So thank you very much for watching guys. Have a good one. I'll see you next time.